sometimes people ask me, is there a really quick way to enlightenment? There's got to be a quicker way. <laughs> a lot of you know what's coming because this is a standard uh, story that I tell, which is, well, are you sure you want to know? <laughs> Maybe you won't like what you hear. Yeah, I can tell you uh, some pretty quick ways uh, to transform deeply. Strong determination sitting. It's a classic. I won't say that every master has done it, but I would say that um, the great majority of people that come to the master level on this path have done a lot of strong determination sitting. So what does that mean? <clears throat> that means that you sit down and you say, okay, for the next hour or the next 90 minutes or two hours or three or four, or whatever, three days, um, not going to voluntarily move. So I know the prospect of something like that seems horrific. You might not imagine yourself doing that. Well, first of all, I said it could just be an hour or 90 minutes, okay? It doesn't have to be three days. Um, uh, secondly, even if it was four hours or eight hours, um, this is not so extravagantly um, uh, unrelated to experiences that normal human beings have. In fact, I would suggest to you that um, at, uh, at least half of all human beings that ever lived uh, have been through an experience comparable in intensity. Do you get what I'm talking about? Okay. Um, sitting, sitting for eight hours and breaking through a posture is not more intense than giving birth to a baby. If you've done that, okay. Now, of course, it's a different circumstance. So, I mean, first of all, there's no way out. <laughs> <laughs> Secondly, there's a lot to distract. And yes, nowadays there are medications and so forth. But the way most people had to give birth to babies for most of humanity, human, humanity's history, um, it, I think it was nature's way to um, bring that person to a, a permanent transcendence. Sort of makes sense, right? You're doing the activity of the source, expanding and contracting. Um, it's interesting, I talked about the Sundance yesterday, Native people. So the story that's told uh, among the Lakota Sioux is that um, originally Sundancing was for men only. Uh, nowadays it's women, even children, actually. Um, uh, the, uh, the men wanted to know what it was like to give birth. So uh, if you look at the symbolism of, of the Sundance, the men wear skirts like women. And um, they, uh, 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 you're attached by a tether pierced, which is symbolic of the umbilical cord. Mm -hmm. And then you have to break loose. And that's like, you know, being born, etc. like a new new birth. Actually, at, in the old days, after, after their fourth year of sun dancing, they considered that they had died and were a completely new person. And um, they actually gave away all their possessions, like everything. All their teepees and ponies and everything. And they just like started from scratch as a new person. Um, Okay, so even though it sort of sounds like really far out there, it's actually no more than 
what at least half of humans uh, do, okay? But, and the good news is, strong determination sitting, you can gradually work up to. You train yourself slowly to be able to do this kind of thing. So the, um, uh, there's one absolute rule. Do not, do not, do not physically damage the body. Um, so how are you going to know if you're physically damaging the body? Well, remember, you gradually train yourself to do this, right? It's a slow training. So you sit for an hour, you got some pain, you get up, it goes away, you're okay. You haven't damaged the body. Then, you know, you add five minutes, five minutes, five minutes. And as long as you're getting up and, you know, after a few minutes, you're okay, then you're okay. I can assure you that with rare exceptions, uh, most people can sit down for four hours uh, and not move and get up and they haven't like damaged any joints or anything like that. But you, you gradually sort of learn how to do this. Oh, by the way, your legs falling asleep um, isn't going to damage anything. And, if, uh, and it's not, you're not cutting off circulation so much. It's more pressure on nerves uh, that causes that paresthesia thing. And that, as you've noticed, disappears as soon as you get up. Uh, there might occasionally be exceptions where people have neurological or circulatory issues. So if you wonder about that, check, check it with a doctor. But uh, usually it's not that uh, big a deal. The main, the main danger in your legs falling asleep is not massive necrosis. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that you might be fantasizing, it's, uh, the tissues are dying, you know. Uh, the main danger is if you try to get up too quickly, your legs will not hold you and you'll fall. I've seen some really far out, you know, people that didn't know that, like in Zen, and like the clackers go, you know, and it's like, okay, everybody jumps up and they just like do a somersault across the Zendo, you know. So, um, yeah, you have to get up slowly. So, um, what's involved in a strong determination sitting? Well, you're going to have four things arise. You're going to have physical sensations, and those are going to get more and more and more intense, for sure. And then, um, you're going to have your thoughts and emotions and your will and your desire and your judgments arising moment by moment reactively to that. So that's a pretty big object. That's the whole mind-body-self. That's why if you can have a complete experience of that, it's um, a powerful transcendence and that's why, as I say, not everyone that becomes a master, but in Asian style training, awful lot of people that become masters, they do this. So, um, so what's going to happen? Well, you start to get physical discomfort. Now, what I usually do, this is my own personal strategy. Uh, you'll find whatever strategy works for you if you decide to do things like this. But my personal strategy is to start by detecting the global spread of the pain rather than going immediately to the uh, local intensity. That's, see, that's sort of the, the sensory clarity skill. Uh, after you get really intimate with the body, you realize that the body is like a pond. And not always, but quite often, when there's a local physical or emotional splash, there's a global ripple. And um, one of the options within the noting apparatus um, is what I call zooming. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can zoom both ways. So zooming both ways means that you thrust your attention into the local splash, but so that's contracted, but at the same time, you spread your attention over the whole body. 
So you zoom, sort of zoom in and out at the same time. Now what that does is that greases the rails, so to speak, for sensations to dissipate in the volume of the body. It's uh, analogous to Boyle's law in physical chemistry. Pressure is inversely proportional to volume. <laughs> Uh, if pressure is analogous to suffering. <laughs> so here's how that works. So when you zoom into a local intensity, of course that becomes very salient. It intensifies even more. But at the same time you're zooming out. Now one of two things will ha happen. Either there will be conscious sensations that are spreading from that local intensity, and the zoom, with the zooming out, you'll be able to detect that and open up to it and facilitate that. The other possibility is that actually there aren't conscious spreading sensations. And that's fine. It's not always the case that there are conscious spreading sensations. But it is almost always the case, with rare exception, that there are subconscious spreading sensations going on. Now, an important principle in mindfulness is we only ask you to attend to what is available in conscious experience. But, so don't worry if you don't detect any of that subliminal spread. But here's the subtlety of the, of the technique, the sort of cleverness of the option. If you spread your awareness over the whole body, zoom out while you zoom in, then even if there's not a conscious awareness of the spread of the sensation, the movement of your attention over the whole body greases the rails for the subconscious processing to um, spread without uh, impeded, so you don't, you may not consciously be aware, but you're giving the very subtle spreading tendencies of the body what they need to dissipate uh, the density of things. So um, that's one possible strategy for doing it. Um, so anyway, I tend to sort of try to get the the local splash and the global ripple. Um, and then at some point, um, I start to freak out. So where does the freak out come? Well, the freak out is in the subjective system. I start to go, oh my God, oh my God, no, no, okay. And I start to get like disconcerting images of being stabbed and <laughs> burned and you know, um, uh, what have you. Um, and then the emotions start to come up in the body. There's a subtle hint of teariness. Uh, locally here, there's a, there's a kind of cold fear thing that sort of like pervades the body. Subtle, but subtle is significant. Um, those see and hear and feel in reactions are natural. Um, if you contract them and unblock them, they won't be a problem. Um, if you can't, then they're going to cross multiply with the physical sensations. And so instead of <clears throat> see in plus hear in plus feel in plus feel out, you're going to get see in times hear in times feel in times feel out. That's why, if you've ever noticed, it's like, I can handle it, I can handle it, I can handle it, no, 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 I can't handle it, okay? It's not linear, right? It's not like, it grows like this, it grows like this. That's because things are starting to cross multiply. But if you have enough clarity to separate out the strands so that they don't, um, uh, uh, they, they don't <coughs> tangle and reinforce each other. 
then actually it just grows linearly. And yes, it gets more and more and more, but you don't get this sort of like um, snowballing overwhelm thing. It just grows, 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 and then something happens. And then grows, 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 and then it just flows, 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 flows. And then, yeah, you go through another cycle and it like gets a little more, and then it just flows, 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 flows. The whole mind-body process. Um, it's scary because the ordinary ordering principle is completely unavailable. The ordinary ordering principle for the body is get comfortable. The ordinary ordering principle for the mind is get answers. And you can't do either. Uh, they, those are just not available. The mind can't process. It's, in fact, your eyes are sort of rolling in your head. Uh, and you're right on the verge of passing out. Um, but you've got a smile on your face. Because you're moment by moment tasting purification. And so you're getting an immediate reward. Um, once again, this may sound radical, but half the people in this room have done this. <laughs> Um, right? Remember back <laughs> if you had kids. Um, so it's just a matter of doing it in a really systematic way. Um, so that's, that's a really big object, the whole mind, body, self. But uh, if we appreciate it to the extreme, just as it is, then at some point it becomes flowing space. Gradually, gradually, gradually you work your way up to this. It's not, it's a homework assignment. You've got the rest of your life to turn in. Um, and you don't have to do it if you don't want to. You can just follow the path of bliss, the jhanas, the absorptions, what have you. That works too.